We begin tonight with President Trump receiving treatment for COVID-19, ready for a third night at the Walter Reed Medical Center. Moments ago, take a look, President Trump surprising supporters gathered outside the hospital, wearing a mask and flashing two thumbs up as the motorcade passed. And in a new message posted today, President Trump saying he has learned a lot about the virus, describing his experience this way, quote, I learned it by really going to school, adding, I get it. Today, his team of doctors led by his physician, Dr. Sean Conley, insisting he is doing very well and that he could be ready for discharge as early as tomorrow. Conley also pressed on why he withheld information about the president's health yesterday, now acknowledging the president's oxygen levels dipped twice. He says he was trying to reflect the president's, quote, upbeat attitude. Chief of Staff Mark Meadows seen with those doctors today, adding to yesterday's confusion, telling reporters the president's vital signs over the past 24 hours had been, quote, very concerning. And many tonight taking a closer look at this image right here. Just over one week ago in the Rose Garden, as President Trump announced Judge Amy Coney Barrett as his pick for the Supreme Court, most without masks, at least eight people there now positive. There are outstanding questions tonight about when the president contracted the virus, how long he's been contagious and how many others may be at risk, including Joe Biden, who shared the debate stage with President Trump for 90 minutes on Tuesday night. ABC White House correspondent Rachel Scott leads our coverage tonight from outside Walter Reed. Tonight, in a surprise move, the president taking his motorcade outside Walter Reed Medical Center. You could see him in a mask, waving to supporters who have been lined up for hours, wishing him well. In a new video saying he's learned a lot about the virus during his experience at the hospital. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school. And I get it and I understand it. And it's a very interesting thing. And I'm going to be letting you know about it. Earlier, the doctor responsible for the president's health walking up to the microphone to give an update on his patient and update his own statements. Dr. Sean Conley explaining why he intentionally withheld information from the American people, saying he didn't want to raise alarm. I was trying to reflect the, the, uh, the upbeat attitude that the team, the president, that his course of illness has had. Um, didn't want to give uh, any uh, any information that might uh, steer the uh, the course of illness in another direction, um, and in doing so, uh, you know, it came off uh, that we were trying to hide something which wasn't necessarily true, um, and uh, so have here I have it. The White House releasing these images: the president out of bed and behind a desk at Walter Reed Medical Center, saying he continues to improve. But the mixed messages from physicians and the administration raise questions about the true nature of his condition. Today, Conley telling reporters he did administer oxygen to the president at the White House on Friday for about an hour after his blood oxygen dropped and he had a high fever. Sources tell us Trump had trouble breathing. I was concerned for possible rapid progression of the illness. I recommended the president we try some supplemental oxygen, see how he'd respond. That admission coming after he made false statements while evading repeated questions just 24 hours earlier. Yesterday and today, he was not on oxygen. Thursday, no oxygen, none at this moment. Yeah, and yesterday with the team, uh, while, while we were all here, he was not on oxygen. Conley has already backtracked on the timing of the president's diagnosis and adding to the confusion minutes after he delivered a rosy assessment of Trump's condition. We remain cautiously optimistic, um, but he's doing great. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows warned Trump's vitals over the last 24 hours were very concerning cautioning the next 48 hours will be critical in terms of his care, reiterating those comments last night on Fox News. Yesterday uh, morning, we were, we were real concerned with that. You know, he had a, a fever and uh, his blood oxygen level had dropped uh, rapidly. Today, reporters asked, whose statement should we believe? The president's physician or the White House chief of staff seen rubbing his head during the briefing? I think his statement was misconstrued. What he meant was that uh, 24 hours ago, when uh, he and I were, were checking on the president, that there was that momentary episode of the high fever and, and that temporary drop uh, in the saturation. Hours later, the president, irritated with Meadows, sought to reassure the American people himself. I came here wasn't feeling so well. I feel much better now. You don't know over the next period of a few days, I guess that's the real test. So we'll be seeing what happens over those next, co next couple of days. The doctors say the president is continuing with remdesivir, an antiviral treatment, and has begun a steroid after his blood oxygen levels dipped a second time. Yesterday, uh, there was another episode 
where he dropped down about 93%. Um, he doesn't ever feel short of breath. Uh, we watched it um, and it, it returned back up. Tonight, it's still unclear just how many people connected to the president have been exposed to the virus. His close aide, Hope Hicks, tested positive on Thursday. Despite having close contact with Hicks all week, that day, the president traveled to Bedminster for a campaign fundraiser. Meeting with about 100 supporters like Charlie Colleen, who told ABC News he got tested after the campaign reached out to him Friday. I was surprised to hear that the president did have coronavirus, given how healthy and upbeat he did sound at that event. Colleen tested negative, but after the news of the president's own positive test broke just before 1 a.m. Friday, the list of others infected seemed to grow by the hour. Three more people tested positive for the virus. Hope Hicks has tested positive for COVID-19. Three Senate Republicans have now tested positive for coronavirus. Today, word the president's personal assistant and body man, Nick Luna, seen next to Hicks boarding Air Force One without a mask Wednesday, is also positive. We still don't know how long the president has been contagious or when he contracted the virus. And health experts fear last week's celebration of Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett may have been a super spreader event. At a reception inside the White House that day, guests maskless and close together. The same was true outside when the president introduced Barrett. Several in the audience would later test positive, including Senator Tom Tillis, Senator Mike Lee, Kellyanne Conway, First Lady, the President of the University of Notre Dame, and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, spotted here hugging other attendees. Christie was also at the White House on Monday, part of the team prepping the President for Tuesday's debate in Cleveland. No one was wearing masks in the room um, when we were prepping the President during that period of time. Now five of the nine there are positive. Christie and ABC News contributor revealing overnight due to a history of asthma, he checked himself into a hospital as a precautionary measure and is experiencing mild symptoms. And as we wish the governor a speedy recovery, let's get right to Rachel with us now outside of Walter Reed. Rachel, there were a lot of developments today. We saw the president just now waving to supporters. His doctors do say he's improving. And if all things go well, they're saying he could be released as early as tomorrow. Tom, the president's medical team says if he looks and feels as well as he does today, that he could be back at the White House as early as tomorrow and will continue his treatment there. Tom? Rachel Scott with the latest from Walter Reed. Rachel, thank you. Of course, so many Americans concerned about the president's condition. Let's get right to ABC News chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jen Ashton. And Dr. Jen, we just saw the president there waving to supporters. The president's medical team staying positive, and we hope indeed he is recovering. But we've been covering this virus long enough to know one of the strangest aspects to COVID-19 is that it can almost trick a patient into thinking they're recovering and then strike even harder. And certainly, Tom, that drive-by was a surprise. But yes, this virus has shown us that it is mysterious. The symptoms can come and go. It can wax and wane. And that is precisely why in medicine we are so reluctant to make a long-term or even short-term prognosis about a patient's future. But one development today, Tom, that really stood out to me, the decision to add the steroid dexamethasone to the patient's treatment regimen. This is the only drug that has shown a survival benefit in clinical trials, but it also indicates that the president's disease is not being considered mild. Dr. Jen Ashton with that important update for us tonight. Dr. Jen, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.